Now, he's an article here, Mail Online. It says, the apple that never goes brown. You see, bioengineering, biotech firm and bid to sell genetically modified fruit for lunch, lunch boxes. This is from, this is a Canadian company, apparently, but it's in the British paper. A Canadian biotechnology company has asked the U.S. authorities to approve a genetically modified apple that will not brown soon after it is sliced. Do you really believe they put all this cash in? To alter, and these are, remember these geneticists too, these guys all, same with Monsanto, worked in, in the, the, the biological warfare departments of governments for years. That's where it all came out of. So warfare specialists and, and altering genes to alter the victims are making your food now. Do you really think it's all, so, so that you care about that apple going brown soon after it's sliced? Do you really think that's what all this work went into that, the kind of money it would end to alter this apple was for. Do you really, really think that? It says, the apple variety which is being marketed as Arctic has the genes responsible for producing the, the enzyme that induces browning and it switches them off. Uh, the Okanagan specialty fruits say the new type could boost sales of apples for snacks and salads at lower costs, etc., 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 then the present, the company goes on to say they look like apple trees and grow like apple trees and produce apples that look like all other apples and when you, they cut them, they won't turn brown. You do really believe that millions of dollars went in so that they could get an apple that didn't turn brown? I mean, how, how long do you leave an apple out once you start eating it? Hmm. So anyway, it says the U.S. Department's, uh, Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service has considered about 100 petitions for genetically engineered or modif- modified crops. Those that have drawn the most attention have been engineered to withstand certain weed killers, which of course is carcinogenic because the plants soak them up into their cells. But amongst those uh, the agency has approved are tomatoes altered to ripen more slowly. The first genetically modified crops approved in the U.S. in 1992 and plums that resist a specific virus. This is the first petition for apples. The approval process can take years and so on, so on and so on. But if they pass enough bucks under the table, it can go through pretty quickly. And of course, I did that myself, that part there. Anyway, it says, Fry over raised concerns about cross-pollination of conventional trees with genetically modified ones if they were planting in close proximity. He also questioned whether Arctic apples would generate enough in sales to outweigh the $10,000 to $20,000 per acre of cost of replanting. And Carter, the president, said he is confident the fruits will not harm the environment, and he submitted paperwork to the USDA and FDA to approve his point. Uh, some people won't like it just because of what it is, he said. In the end, it's a great product, no question about it, and people will see the process and get used to it. And uh, it says it's based on very sound science. So Andrew Kimberl Executive Director of the Center for Food Safety said scientists have been saying they're only turning one thing off. That's like one gene or switch or whatever for Enzo. But that switch is connected to another switch and another switch. You can't just do one thing to nature. It's nice to think so, but it just doesn't work that way. He also said the non-browning technology appears to benefit apple growers and shippers more than consumers by allowing companies to sell apples that are older than they look. It says, a Botox apple is not what people are looking for, Kimbrough said. I'm predicting failure. Well, let's hope so, because I tell you, this stuff has more effects than they're telling you. And as I say, when you really have these guys who were, were trained for bio-warfare, trained to wipe out whole populations by slow-kill methods too, but that's one of their big ones, it's slow-kill methods. And now they're making your food and you're guzzling it down and you think it's all for your benefit and it's cost-effective and all the rest of it. If the, if, listen, if, if you can put that on the shelf there and bugs won't touch it, insects won't touch them, then you shouldn't eat it either. Because there's nothing in it of nourishing value. But there's certainly other things in it which will certainly get into your gut system and do amazing things with your body. The, the first potatoes they brought out too, of course, the, the, it's amazing too, were not allowed by law to have independent studies and all this stuff, but where it take the company's word for things. This is amazing stuff. Now, Canada and Canadians, Canadians were the first ones to be tested for this. We were tested for 10 years, at least the officials say now, um, with GMO f- uh, foods and crops. Because the government's admitted when it, the lid blew off the whole thing, they were using the, the, the public 
as guinea pigs in Canada for 10 years without their knowledge because the government made secret deals with Monsanto to do so. That also meant, too, they were doing uh, studies on the health and to see what was happening to the public. But we know that stomach problems and stomach cancers have soared, just like it did in the, in the rats, of course, who were fed the potatoes. But of course, that's coincidence, isn't it? But no, they're really all there to help you, all these associations and the FDA and all that. That's they're, they're, Oh, God, what am I thinking here? I'm getting paranoid. Hmm. Anyway, that's the world you really live in. And as I say, food, uh, diet... And injections and junctions, right? Bertrand Russell, 1930s. We produce the kind of character and uh, citizen that the, the ruling class wanted. That's just coincidence again, too.